is pretty old. I mean, it's pretty wide, so it's been here for a really long time. It works within an ecosystem, not against an ecosystem. Its roots are really deep, it, they've spread around, they provide nutrients to other plants around. We should kind of look at as a tree as an example. It's lived in an ecosystem, it's created an ecosystem, it's lived within it. It's positively impacted. Trees are a perfect example of kind of how humans should act essentially. <laughs> you should just put your voice on mine now. <laughs> there we go. Okay, let's go. I work as the Director of Wildlife Rehabilitation at Pink Wild. Every morning, I have the unique opportunity to bridge that gap of nature in humans and be able to better this community through education, rehabilitation, so we can be part of the solution and not a part of the problem. Think Wild exists in Central Oregon because there is such a need for a rehabilitation hospital as well as conservation center because animal or wildlife are getting injured every day due to human impact. Getting hit by a car or window strikes, caught by cats, all are caused by humans. Before Think Wild, there were very few rehabilitation centers around Central Oregon, so animals weren't getting the care that they needed. His breathing's a little bit arrhythmic. And, and we can take him, we can just do flow by oxygen, so we'll take his head out. I saw him pull his head back slightly. Is he somewhat okay. reactive? Right here, you see that how this bone is just sticking out? And then uh -huh. look at it on lateral. We diagnosed a coracoid fracture. So we see this in birds that hit windows just from the blunt force trauma of going their fastest speed basically and hitting the window. So this is a common injury we see. Whether it's putting up window strips so the birds don't hit your windows, or it's driving a little bit slower around the areas that you know deer are crossing the road. We want people to be thinking every day in just their small everyday decisions. It's really an ethos. So don't want the wildlife to get injured. I'm Caroline. I'm Elisa, so nice to meet you. Watch yourself. Okay. Uh, beautiful. Do you want me to put the food out? Yes. To encourage wildlife to flourish, then we need to kind of give them the tools to do it and, and the space to do it. And more the space. So we're basically promoting flight. This is flight therapy to kind of amp up his ability to fly long distances and soar. And this is really the first time that I've seen him kind of bank up and then land down. So he's made a significant improvement in flight. So we're, we're basically test flying him. <laughs> the issue that I see happening is that there is a separation between humans and the environment and that humans think that they are above the environment or not a part of an ecosystem. And Think Wild has this unique opportunity of bridging that knowledge gap and showing humans that we are very much a part of an ecosystem and how they can make a positive impact on an ecosystem or the community in which they live in. Uh, sometimes the world can feel really depressing. Yeah. So I think working in a small place like this feels like, okay, we're like actually doing something that matters, so it's nice. 
remember I went to Yellowstone and I pulled over on the side of the road because there was a big crowd of people because they had all seen a great gray owl. And that is like a really rare animal to see, really exciting and you know, everybody was really amazed and I thought, oh, that's, you know, that's really neat. I've never seen that before. A couple weeks later, that Think Wild got their first great gray owl in for care and I happened to be there that day and I was just like, you know, here we are in Bend, Oregon, the small wildlife hospital and we just got this rare animal in that, you know, people were so excited to be seeing. And we were actually able to rescue it, rehabilitate it. Uh, and I was the one who brought the owl to the release site and watched it fly off into the wild. I felt like that moment for me really showed that what we're doing here is making a difference. It's not just for the lives of these animals, but for the larger ecosystem and the larger habitat. And so I think you'll find that if you get involved and think wild, you'll have many little small moments like that that will make you realize that what you're doing makes a difference. What are some of the ways that you think wild animals might get hurt out while they're while they're out and about? Yep. Uh, make sure you don't leave trash, and because it um it doesn't help the earth, and also um wild animals could um get into it. Yeah. All right. Here's some banana, apples, and pear over here for you guys. Make sure you get your peanut butter first, though. If they're if they're in an enclosure all day, they still need to practice being a wild animal, right? So if we give them these enrichment, it helps, it helps teach them how to dig and forage for things. So things they'll have to do in the wild once they're released, right? So that's why we gotta make sure we are, we're sticking them in really nice here. These children will be the next generation of adults, essentially, as they grow. The seeds and sprinkle it over where the peanut butter is. So being able to teach them early to be stewards of nature is yeah, incredibly important and will only improve the ecosystem in which we live. You can put more peanut butter on it, that's fine. It's our organization's goal to educate the community and to help the community learn about our native wildlife and learn about ways that we can help them and help our community grow in a sustainable way. Just kind of, it's like the ripple effect. When you go into schools and you teach kids this, then they're gonna take it to their communities when they grow up. Something that gets me really passionate is working in a local community, helping local wildlife and starting at a local level because that will inspire the rest of the community. That will, you know, change the place where you're in. And I think you can start small and eventually those will have big impacts. Because if an entire community starts to care and starts to have buy-in to a problem and starts to find solutions together, I think that's when you start, you know, making it bigger and getting, you know, a wider impact. You know, we have some really awesome dedicated volunteers and I always say that one of my favorite things about Think Wild, obviously, I love the animals, but the community here and how the community has responded. We have very dedicated volunteers that allow us to fulfill and even surpass our mission. One of those volunteers, just an example, is Laura, our veterinarian. She comes in before she goes into work. Where she works about a 10 hour day, she comes in to Think Wild at 6 a.m. and helps us with um, diagnostic procedures. She also performs surgeries, all on her free time. And it's incredible, and she's a major part of the reason why Think Wild is such a successful wildlife rehabilitation and conservation center. Success comes from the team and our passion. His legs are less. You, they're just kind of like overlapped. Like, you see them, yeah, you see how they're just too overlapped. Them. Is it pointy? Okay, so it's low but not critical. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Michael. Um, so I received your email, and we are getting some supplies ready right now to help um, get the skunk out of the trap. And we should be there in about 15 or 20 minutes. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. I say, how do you do such a wonderful job? Oh, thank you. It's, it's hard work, but we can't do it without, uh, sure. without concerned citizens like you.
You know, with the hospital, we get um, a lot of people in the community that are really concerned about the wildlife that they see in their yard or um, when they're out hiking and that kind of thing. And, and so when we get those phone calls about injured wildlife or they have wildlife concerns, it's a really teachable moment um, for the citizens in our community so that we can help them to understand uh, what they can do to help that wildlife. And then also, really I like to call it the gateway drug uh, to conservation. It really gets them thinking about how are we impacting wildlife and how can we maybe make different choices or, or do things a little bit differently so that wildlife is always sort of top of mind. Helping wildlife to be um, more successful out away from that and, and conserving their habitat so they're successful in the long run. The hardest ones that I get in are completely human impacted, so like those osprey coming in, I definitely almost cried. It took a lot to hold it in because they had just fledged the nest and like they were about to be free and then they couldn't because they were connected by a rope. So it was just really sad. <laughs> the moment I like an animal is admitted and there's an initial feeling of sadness that wow that animal came in here because it was injured but then there's this feeling of kind of wow I can make a difference by bettering the community in which I live. I mean look at beavers they are a huge impact on the environment. The effect that beavers have on the landscape is just massive. And why we're interested in it with Think Wild is because 39% of the endangered species for the state of Oregon actually flourish in the kind of habitat that beavers provide. When they create dams, it basically helps with holding water levels, uh, water stream flow consistency. They're able to create so many other habitats for other species. I've seen blue heron, I've seen kingfisher, coyotes, deer, they all come to the beaver ponds to feed. So if we get more beavers and more beaver habitat in here, then we get more wildlife. I'm looking for whether there's a den. I'm also looking for other damming activities. You can see in here, um, they have little feeding stations, little areas where they kind of park and um, decide that they want to hang out and eat or groom or what have you. You can see there's little channels. And so I'm going to set my camera on that trail because I want to get an idea of how big they are, how many there are, um, and also what direction, and then see if I can uh, see them moving food up or down their stream. Yeah, I think we'll get some good footage there as long as otters don't screw with it. Yeah, okay. So the important thing is to reestablish the conditions that they need to come back in and be successful. Just like in a natural ecosystem that's you know self-productive and self-sustaining, there are ways for communities to grow in that way too. And so that's really what Think Wild's mission is, is to advocate for all of our resources, advocate for all of the living beings that live here, not just humans, but also uh, wildlife and na our natural places and all the things that make Central Oregon so special. Do you wanna say one thing? that is going to change the world. Oh, I don't know what I would say. It's really important that people come and be a part of our mission because we can't do what we do without the help of the community to really help reduce human wildlife conflict, to help be stewards of the environment rather than a part of the problem. 
there's a lot of opportunity to help. Come volunteer, come donate, to come see the difference we make in the community. Somehow in the last year and a half, now we have, I guess, six staff and over 130 volunteers involved with Think Wild. We're growing pretty quickly, and I, I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon. I have to keep on going, which is hard over time, but and I don't want recognition or anything. I just do it because I want to. Oregon has been the home of this wildlife much longer than any of us humans have been here, so they have a right to live here just as much as we do. Without wildlife, the world isn't as rich. There's a reason why they're all here, and it makes the world whole. We're really a part of nature. It all goes around. We're just a piece of all of it.